Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation D VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out Hisuian Zorark for the very first time. The Hisuian Zorark is paired with Annihilate and Mousehold, which is a combination that's been quite popular throughout Scarlet and Violet VGC, but has fallen off a little bit in this format. The idea is that Mousehold and Annihilate is a lead duel that commands a lot of respect from your opponents, so very frequently, opponents will lead in a way to try to beat that as hard as possible. What you can then do is lead Zorark, disguise as one of Mousehold and Annihilate, and use it to surprise your opponents. The Zorark here has Hyper Voice and Shadow Ball for damage, as well as Icy Wind for speed control, and the general idea is that the Zorark can really catch opponents off guard. They often will spend a lot of resources to try to eliminate what they think is Mouse Hold or Annihilate, and you can use it in the early game to get rid of the counters to the Mouse Ape combination, then really get going afterwards. So I think it's not the easiest Pokemon to use, but I think it makes a ton of sense on a team like this, and I'm just excited to see how well we can do with it. So as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below. And thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like to the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. Breaking things down, as always, rental, pace, and team creator are linked down in the description below. And question of the day, I want to know if you could create another ability like Illusion, how would you design it down in the comment section below? Now, the first Pokemon to talk about on this team, of course, is Hisu and Zorark. The first thing that I want to say is that this is not an easy Pokemon to use, and I think piloting this team as a result may be challenging because Zorark is a Pokemon that can offer you a lot, but it can often also feel pretty useless. The main thing to know about Zorark is that it is just really frail. You're not going to be able to take hits very well. So the general idea behind using it, in my opinion, is to have a really strong lead and catch your opponents off guard. So I've used it in a lot of positions where I catch my opponent off guard and then use it to eliminate what I think are the biggest threats to Mouse Hold and Annihilate. For example, a lot of players will often go with Fluttermane and just go Fairy, Terra, Choice Specs, Moonblast to eliminate Mouse hold immediately, but what's interesting with something like Zorark is you can pair it with, say, Heatran, and with the Focus Sash and Heatran having Assault Vest, you can actually match up a lot better into things like Fluttermane, for example. So the general idea is use Zorark to bait out those big attacks, and then retaliate back, and then try to use it with its partner to just get a knockout. So I actually like leading Zorark and Heatran pretty frequently. By the way, the way Illusion works is that it copies what your fourth Pokemon slot is, and so when you select your Pokemon in-game, let's say you want to disguise as the mouse hold and you lead Annihilate, you can go like Zorark plus Annihilate, you choose a third Pokemon and then Mouse Hold as your fourth option, and the Zorark when led will be disguised as the mouse hold. Mouse Hold and Annihilate is a combo that we've seen a lot of in competitive VGC, but if you're new, the general idea is that Beat Up here synergizes really nicely with Rage Fist because it gets the Annihilate stacked up very quickly, and so the idea is that you can just go with Mouse Hold and the Annihilate as a lead, go for the Beat Up, and then stack up quickly. Water Terra is really the most common it feels like in Regulation D, and that's really valuable into so many of the different types, but especially Urshifu Water and, of course, Surging Strikes. That's another way you can actually get your Rage Fist stacked up as well. To round things out, you've got Assault Vest Heatran. This is just a very bulky set. One thing you can consider playing around with this team is giving more speed investment. Uh, the team creator did not have speed investment really on Heatran because they mentioned that it is pretty valuable to have Heatran under Trick Room. I found scenarios where I think Zorark plus Heatran, if there was more speed on here, where you could outspeed, for example, Urshifu at minus one and just go for something like Icy Wind plus Grass Terra Terra Blast is another way that you could think about using this Pokemon. But this Heatran is designed to just stay on the field for a long time. Super good in tall those special attackers, especially things like Fluttermane, and Grass Terra Terra Blast is really nice as well. To round things out, you've got Landorus. This is a Citrus Berry set. So the general idea behind this Landorus is it's valuable for Intimidate. Citrus Berry allows you to survive for longer than your opponents anticipate, and this of course can be a really effective sweeper with Flying Terra Terra Blast, and you've also got Rocky Helmet Zapdos. So this is a really nice counter into Water Urshifu, gives you speed control with this team. I've had games where I lead with like Zorark and Zapdos, and disrupt my opponent in the early game, go for Hyper Voices and Tailwinds, then try to close out the game with Mouse Hold and Annihilate. To me, when using this team, I generally first ask, how can I best utilize this combination? And the first question I ask is, well, does my opponent have counters to Mousehold and Nightlape? Most teams will. And the ways that people beat Mousehold and Nightlape are just eliminating Mousehold immediately before it can even get a beat up off, right? So Pokemon that are faster than Mousehold, that's going to be a big deal. Pokemon that can get knockouts onto it immediately, like Choice Specs Flutter with Moonblast, for example, and Fairy Terra, or Urshifu, for example. 
are ways that can deal with mouse hold. If you're up against slower teams though, that actually don't have things that can just one shot mouse hold and outspeed it, like mouse hold annihilate does end up being a pretty good lead duo. But when I use this team, I first ask, okay, can I lead mouse hold and annihilate? If not, then my eyes turn to Zorark, and then I start asking myself, well, how do I utilize Zorark? Can I lead it immediately? And if I lead it, how much value can I actually get from this Pokemon? Because once again, Zorark is not an easy Pokemon to use. This Pokemon can win you the game single handedly just off a of really strong turn one or turn two, or it can be led and just do absolutely nothing for you and put you in a really difficult position. Hyper Voice, Shadow Ball, they do good damage, but you're not going to get big one-hit knockouts with those moves generally, and so when you use this Pokemon, you really have to think about the value that you get from Illusion specifically. And so, yeah, in terms of, like, lead combinations, I often find myself leading Zorark with really anything. I think, like, Zorark plus Annihilate is fun, where you disguise this as Mousehold, for example. Uh, Zorark, Heatran, Zorark, Lander, Zorark, Zapdos are all viable as well. Part of the question is, what are the biggest threats to my Mousehold Annihilate combination? So, for example, when I've played against the team that won the World Championships this year, I find Zorark and Heatran to be really interesting, because a lot of my opponents have led, like, Fluttermane, Amoongus, or Urshifu Water plus Fluttermane, for example. And Heatran, I find to be a really effective early game attacker where I can flash cannon into Flutter Remain, I can Heat Wave into Amoongus, Grass Terra, Terra Blast into Water Urshifu, for example. So, yeah. One of the things to keep in mind is also what do I disguise myself as, right? And so you want to be a little bit careful because if you disguise yourself, for example, as Landorus and your opponent sees Landorus and the Intimidate doesn't come out, well, then they're going to be like, that's probably Zorark. So, also. Put some thought into what you want that fourth Pokemon to be. And I normally try to think about it in terms of, can I use a Pokemon that would bait out moves that I can resist or I'm immune to? And so that's some food for thought, right? If you, for example, disguise as the Annihilate, your opponents will try to use Ghost-type attacks into it frequently. And obviously Zorark is immune to that. Similarly, if you use uh, Mousehold as the Pokemon that you are disguised as, and they go for Fighting-type attacks, while well, Zorark here also is immune to that thanks to Ghost. And so think about how you can leverage Zorark's typing in particular as you pick Pokemon to disguise into. So yeah, to me, this team is mainly centered around Mousehold and Annihilate. So in almost all my games, I'm asking myself, how can I figure out the best position to bring that out? Is it a lead? Is it using Zoark in the early game to beat those threats and then use it in the mid to end game? Those are questions I ask myself constantly. But now let's quickly highlight some weaknesses. In terms of things to look out for, I think that, once again, Zorark is not an easy Pokemon to use, so please keep that in mind while you use this team, because I've had a lot of losses where I lead Zorark, think I can get value out of it, and it just doesn't really do enough. I think those games in particular are matches where my opponent has a lot of bulk on their team, and the damage output from moves like Hyper Voice and Shadow Ball just don't do enough. When I think about using Zorark, I mainly think about how I can utilize either Icy Wind to drop my opponent's speed and get a surprise knockout, something like Zorark Zapdos, where I can Icy Wind into Thunderbolt onto an Urshifu, for example, that's something that you can consider, or whether or not Shadow Ball and Hyper Voice actually do meaningful damage. But yeah, I think if you do not play well with Zoroark, this thing can often actually bring you down because it just takes up a slot of something that can potentially deal more damage. So that's something to consider. With Mousehold and the Annihilate combination, Generally, people try to deal with this by either eliminating Mousehold before it can get the beat up off onto Annihilate. So Fairy Terra Specs Moonblast, for example, from Fluttermane into it. You can use Urshifu, for example, as well. It's funny because this team has Water Terra Annihilate as well as Rocky Helmet Zapdos, but I still find Urshifu can be pretty scary to play against because Surging Strikes does just do so much damage. So that's one thing to look out for. I also have had opponents that are really smart and on turn one basically don't go for like a super hard committal play and like try to bait out and see if they can understand whether or not it's Zorark on the field rather than something like Mouseholder or Annihilate. So I've had players who like hold on to their Terra, for example, or don't go for immediate damage and kind of play a little bit more defensively on turn one. And sometimes if you just like blow the illusion or like you use a move that obviously reveals it's Zorark, then your opponents can leverage that to their advantage as well. I think another thing that can be scary is that you don't have that much speed control with this team. It's mainly Icy Wind from Zorark. So against teams that are like super aggressive, either in terms of the fast end, like Tailwind stuff or slow Trick Room stuff, it can be a little bit challenging. I had one game that I was practicing with where I led with the Zorark plus the uh, Heatran, and my opponent had Choice Specs Chiyu and Dark Pulse, and Dark Pulse like flinched Zorark, I missed Heat Wave on a Chiyu, which had Grass Terra, and then Dark Pulse also flinched Heatran. So moving after your opponent can be a little bit challenging because then it opens the door for secondary effects and bad RNG, for example. So that's something you have to consider as well. And with Annihilate, obviously you have a lot of good defense, um, but special attackers can still really hurt this Pokemon. And if you go for Water Terra, you do become weak to new types like Grass and Electric. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And I think fundamentally with this team, it's not very easy to get big one-hit knockouts unless you get your Rage Fist combo off. So keep that in mind, where often you'll be trading damage and you have to think about 
how you actually properly trade to a point where you can actually win the game rather than you trading but then your opponent just outpaces you and KOs you in subsequent turns so those are all some things I've thought about in ways that I've lost the game before that I played while practicing so yeah anyway let's get into these matches Okay, we've got a Reich C team. Flutter Chiyu, Dondozo, Chienpao, Dragonite, Tatsu. I don't know why I said it in that order, but I did. <laughs> Interesting. I think Zoroark is very cool here because of the immunity to extreme speed and Icy Wind and a Dragonite plus Chienpao. So I really like Zoroark. Hmm. Who do I want to bring and who do I not want to bring? Heatran's kind of awkward. Water Terror on this. I'm thinking like a Landorus Zora Arc lead. Uh, is that actually best? Because it's like they can still go for an Ice type attack into that slot. Oh, that's kind of scary, actually. I I'm mainly preparing for Dragonite Champao lead, but I think I need to be prepared for Chiyu Flutter as well. It might actually be Zorark plus Annihilate. Zapdos, and then we disguise as Mouse. Yep. So I'm bluffing Mouse with Annihilate lead, which should put on a lot of pressure immediately. Which I think is interesting. Um, yeah, I think having Icy Wind and Hyper Voice on Zorark alone is pretty valuable. I think Annihilate can angle for bulk ups in this game. One of the questions is whether or not it's Oblivious or Unaware Dondozo. Oblivious feels way more common. And they go with Flutter Chi Yu. Okay. So I think with this lead, normally my opponent is going to go for something like... Okay, so it's Booster on Flutter. Is it Special Attack or Speed? Speed. Okay. I think here, turn one, I'm okay double protecting to scout out for what they want to do. It baits out Protects. It baits out a potential Terra from Chi Yu. And then I can go from there. Right? Like, one thing to consider right now is if you're my opponent, you're worried about, like, the beat-up combos. But I think one of the other interesting things here is that there is the special defense drop coming out from Chiyu applying onto the Flutter main. They're going to go for a Terra. It's going to be Terra Chiyu. Fire or Ghost? Okay. Cool. So, like, I thought about Icy Wind Drain Punch turn one. I'm glad I didn't go for that. Curious if it's Scarf Chiyu as well. Hmm, if I had Heatran here, it would have been a perfect switch in. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Fake tears! <laughs> you know, that's like really great for me to see, though, quite frankly. Um, because this is... Zoroark. So we're actually very okay seeing that. You already committed your Terra. I've got Shadow Ball. I personally want to just Shadow Ball into Flutter Main here, Terra, and Rage Fist it. I'm going for a Terra here because I think it's just pretty good until the rest of the team at this point anyway. I don't want to take super effective damage from like a Dazzling Gleam Heat Wave combo, for example. Fate Tears is very interesting. Did not expect to see that. Okay, perfect. Oh, the bait of Zorark here is amazing. Okay, and they are Scarf Chiyu as well. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, I'm very happy with this outcome then. As long as we don't flinch. If we don't flinch, I think we're in amazing shape. Nice. So I get my Shadow Ball off. Okay. Nice. And that just knocks out the Flutter Main thanks to the special defense draw from Chiyu. Oh, what a sick start to this game. Beautiful. I don't think Rage Fist KOs here. It's just base power, but that's fine. Oh, that was a lot of damage, though. I wonder if Bulk Up was better to go for there. Hmm. And they did bring Dondozo. Interesting. Okay. I don't hate what I have in terms of dealing with Dondozo. Um, 
You could just Dark Pulse Annihilate now. Tozo shouldn't be that good into us at this point in the game. Icy Wind from this is actually pretty valuable, so I don't mind going for an Icy Wind here. An Icy Wind, I'm thinking about clicking Bulk Up or Protect. But maybe we just go for the Knockout here onto Chiyu. We'll see if they switch. Okay, they switch. Yeah, that's fine though. Because the thing is, now that you can't Terra your Dondozo and you're bringing in Tatsu, like, I think Zapdos, Mouse, plus Annihilip should be an excellent trio to finish off my opponent. I just wish I knew whether it was oblivious or unaware, but I think we are pretty well equipped with the tools that we have in this game. And, like, I didn't want to bring Landers into a matchup where it is oblivious, because then Landers is just completely useless. Okay, so this is the upside. We still will get the Icy Wind off. Nice. So we dropped on Dozo's speed. Presumably they just go for EQ here, but you're just stacking up Rage Fist now. Oh, it's Substitute. That's interesting. Okay, definitely didn't expect Substitute. But that's fine, right? It's like I've dropped your speed. You have leftovers, but I have bulk up. And I can Hyper Voice. Plus bulk up right now. So I still don't know whether or not to oblivious or unaware, but I'm down to just try. So we'll get Hyper Voice here, which does damage through Protect. We'll get bulk up. Sub definitely makes things a little bit more interesting. I feel like it's been a lot less popular in this format, but okay, it's sub order up. Makes sense. So that'll get a knockout onto the Zora arc. But I'm okay with this because if your order up sub protect wave crash, like how are you ever really beating Annihilate, right? And like I think what I can do right now is just bring out the mouse hold. Man, Zorark was so awesome in this game. Like, my opponent had a really interesting surprise of Fake Tears plus Scarf Dark Pulse, but it baited out the combo perfectly. So now I can just go for Beat Up onto the Annihilate, and then just Rage Fist onto Dondozo. That Icy Wind earlier was really helpful. And just making sure we can outspeed Dondozo, even when combined with Tatsu. I think the main thing to consider is I could still lose to Scarf Chiyu plus Tatsu, so... It's not like we just win the game if I knock out Dondozo here immediately, but I'm feeling pretty good about the position. And I think Zorak being able to take advantage of Chiyu dropping Flutter main special defense and getting a knockout was great. I double protected on turn one of this battle specifically to bait out that turn one Terra, and so seeing that come out immediately was great as well. Okay, a couple stacks onto the Annihilate. We get our Rage Fist off. Wonderful. That break substitute. Cool. Let's see if they wave crash or order up or earthquake. Okay, just order up onto the mouse. Yeah, that's fine. It's a lot of damage, but it's not a KO. Mm, I think it's probably correct to protect mouse here. I could just super fang actually, no? I don't know. I think I'm okay going for Protect and Rage Fist here. Because I don't know how much Rage Fist is actually going to do into Dondozo right now. Like, we've seen Order Up. We've seen Sub, right? So I'm not that worried about Dondozo's moveset. As soon as you commit your Terra to, to Chiyu, it just means you can't go for anything wild, like a Terra Ghost or a Terra Grass Dozo, for example. So I'm going to Protect here. Okay, they don't Protect, so I get Rage Fist off. Nice. Oh! Well, we can just crit as well, I guess. <laughs> that was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> I don't think I needed that. Um, and I think our Annihilate was very well protected, but that makes the game... Does it make it easier for me? I actually, like, wanted them to potentially attack me there, but it just means that they don't get the chance to, like, crit my side of the field. But it's one of those where it's like, I didn't really want the crit to happen because I was really happy with how I was playing, and, like, I feel like we would have been totally fine without it. Um, anyway, I've got Zapdos in the back. We know this is Choice Scarfed, so I think all I do is go for Follow Me here to make sure I don't get flinched by Dark Pulse, and then just Rage Fist to get the knockout onto Chiyu. Yeah, and my opponent forfeits. Cool. I wish we could have played this game out without the crit, because that just immediately ends the game, I think, but yeah, 
what is Dondoza really going to do there, right? Like, I would think it takes enough damage where another Rage Fist just gets the knockout. And Dondozo can go for sub. If you go for sub, then I just go for Super Fang plus Rage Fist the next turn. If you go for a order up onto Annihilate, it's like, yeah, that does decent damage, but I've got Friend Guard support. Like, you're not doing over 50%. Uh, if you go for Wave Crash, well, we're Water Terra, so we're well protected there as well. And this is one of the reasons why Dondozo has, like, kind of fallen off a little bit. I think Water Terra has just been, like, incredibly common. And obviously, Pokemon like Rillaboom and Water Urshifu exist in the format as well, so it's harder for Dondozo to thrive. But yeah, the thing about Dondozo is like, it can't get a lot of big one-hit knockouts, so you actually... That's why like these surprise Terra sets have been popping up. Like I used a top-ranked Dondozo team. Uh, if you want to see me play with it, I'll link it down in the description below, but I actually think it's probably the best Dondozo team I've tried in Regulation D in this format. And that team has like Ghost Terra 4 attack Dondozo, and... The thing is, like, your standard Dondozo sets that only have, like, Wave Crash, Earthquake, or Order Up, they just actually can't deal that much damage to your Water types, or your Grass types, or your Terras that uh, come from those either, and that makes it a lot harder. But, yeah, I thought Zorark was awesome in this game because it baited out what they thought was probably, and it was a really cool surprise, and they thought they are like, oh, I'll just eliminate Mousehold immediately uh, and then play the game from there, but that's why I love this bluff because po opponents will spend a lot of resources just trying to deal with Mousehold. When you bait that out, you deal with their early resources and their best answers to Mousehold, then you actually bring out uh, Mousehold and play the game from there. Okay, we've got Flutter, the Ursaluna, Amoongus, Chiyu, Cresselia, and Urshifu here. Hmm. Heatran's really compelling here, especially into Flutter Chiyu. I'm honestly thinking we can go Zoroark plus the Heatran lead. Zoroark, Heatran. I guess my concern is that they actually play towards Trick Room immediately. And do I want to go Mouse Ape or do I want to bring Landorus here? What if I led Mouse Ape? It just... How are their, what are their Trick Room setups? You go Cresselia, Moongus. I guess you could just go Cresselia, Ursaluna, which would be, not be good for this lead. I do have Super Fang on this. Hmm. But not, we don't really have, like, an incredible amount of burst damage. I think I'm hoping that the Mouse Ape lead instills some fear in them, which it should. So I'll go with this, and I think I want to disguise as Annihilate. Let's see how this plays out. Uh, maybe disguising as Mouse is better here. Just so that they feel pressure to like double up onto that slot, and I just protect turn one. But I think if you see Annihilate immediately, you've got to be worried about it just clicking bulk up. They go with Crescent Flutter. Okay. Not the worst lead to run into. I think here... I actually don't mind just clicking Protect into Heat Wave turn 1. I think the problem here is they could actually just switch Flutter out into... You could switch Flutter out immediately. I'll Protect Heat Wave still. Terra! Okay. That makes me feel like it's Terra... Yeah, and then you just, what? Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam? This is great for me, in my opinion. I'm very happy to see this. I'm mainly curious if they end up Trick Rooming. But, yeah, that's kind of a surprise Terra, but I think they wanted to just Moonblast and probably deal as much damage to Annihilate as possible. Yeah. And they were trying to cover for Terra there. So... By leading the Zorak, we actually got them to bait out a Terra immediately. Oh, whoa. Icy win from Cresselia. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, that's fine, though. Okay, Heat Wave doesn't miss. Gets a burn on Flutter, which is quite lucky. I can just Flash Cannon that slot now. And with Zoroark here, I think I'm happy just letting them click Moonblast into this again. Like, it's not a big deal. I think it's better to conserve all of these pieces than let them take a Moonblast. So I'm happy, personally, just clicking Shadow Ball into Cresselia. 
Actually, they could go for Moonblast Lunar Blessing here, right? So to cover for Lunar Blessing, I think I'm, I don't mind going for Hyper Voice and Flash Cannon. Yep, there's the Moonblast again, but essentially they didn't really need to Terra, right? But they did it to really try to snipe down Annihilate as quickly as possible, but we can leverage that to our advantage, which is pretty sweet. Yep, so there's this guy's, or Illusion. Get my Hyper Voice. Did they Lunar Blessing? Yeah, perfect. Nice. I think Ursa Luna coming out right now, though, is still really scary. But we'll get the knockout here onto Fluttermane. Perfect. And the main thing is that they have committed their Terra, whereas I have not, right? I think Malsape is also... It's interesting into Ursa Luna, because I can't Rage Fist Ursa Luna, actually. Actually, the more I think about it, it's like... Oh, but they don't bring Ursa Luna out. Yeah, I was going to say, in retrospect, I think I actually needed better Ursa Luna answers. No, it's still fine. Yeah, like Drain Punch and Mouse are fine. Anyway, they bring out Urshifu. Uh, it could be Aqua Jet into Zoroark here. I think Water Terra this looks amazing right now. Yeah, I don't even mind losing both Pokemon here if it means I stack up. Hyper Voice. I could also just Grass Terra Terra Blast this, right? I think that also works. Like, why lose both Pokemon immediately here? I can potentially get a one-hit knockout onto Urshifu. Okay. I don't know if this was the right decision. I just thought, like, because I think Mouse Ape, if I were to position it correctly here, would be incredible. Um, okay, they detect Urshifu. Yeah. But uh, it was mainly, like, how would I get Mouse and Ape out at the same time, basically, right? Okay, they go for Icy Wind. That's fine. Although, man, could you imagine if I switched in Annihilate there? I think the game would just be immediately over, because it would have eaten up a Defiant Boost. And I then could just Water Terror and Rage Fist everything. Okay, I'm happy to bring out Annihilate here. You already committed your Terror, so Surging Strikes definitely won't KO us. So I'm happy to just go for Rage Fist onto Cresselia. Right? Like, if you Surging Strikes this, I take advantage of that. And Terra Blast into Urshifu. But I actually think I don't... I didn't love how I played this mid to end game. Mainly because if I did conserve my Terra, then Water and Eyelape here would have just walled them completely. I mean, they, they would have been able to close combat with Urshifu and Moonblast, but... Neither of those are too scary. That being said, I still think I'm in fine shape. This is actually what I'm curious about. Does Helping Hand Surging Strikes KO and Eyelape? I wouldn't think so. Oh, they actually go for close combat. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, I figured we'd survive there since the C-Trend's very bulky, but 1 HP. It's a little closer than I would have liked, honestly. Sheesh. Okay. Well, now I get Terror Blast. Let's see if your focus hashed. Nope. Okay. Beautiful. It's definitely been an interesting game, but Zorark once again putting in a lot of work in kind of baiting out my opponent to go for the Fairy Terra with Fluttermane immediately, which I think was super helpful for us in this battle. She used the last one. Okay. That's fine with me. Chiyu, Chiyu, Chiyu. Minus two speed. This might have overheat, so I think I want to be careful. I would like to go for a Protect personally. And go for an Earth Power. We, we mainly want to just sacrifice the Heatran here. And yeah, they actually go for Helping Hand, which makes me think they might be trying to snipe off the Annihilate with Overheat, which was what I was trying to cover for. Ah, they were just going for Dark Pulse. Okay, that's fine. It means I get an Earth Power off. Almost gets the KO there. Hmm. 
You could go for, like, I don't think they're going to Icy Wind at this point. We've seen Icy Wind, Lunar Blessing, Helping Hand. I would think Trick Room, honestly, is their fourth, given that you have Ursa Luna. So if Icy Wind's your only offensive option, you could Icy Wind Dark Pulse here, hope for a flinch. I think I personally want to switch in Mouse Hold here and then Heat Wave. So then I can just follow me the subsequent turn. I actually think Earth Power may have been better here. I don't... Because a double miss would be pretty bad. I'm assuming they don't have Overheat if they went for Helping Hand Dark Pulse last turn, but... Okay, yep, they do Dark Pulse and Icy Wind, so nice play there. But this is fine, because it gives me the free switch and back into Annihilate, which I'm looking for. Yeah, and if they went for Helping Hand Dark Pulse again there, then I'd just win the game off that. But now we bring out Annihilate. I just assume Cresselia's last one is Trick Room. Like, it would be crazy for it to not be Trick Room, given what they have on their team. Right, there's Amoongus and Ursa Luna. So with that, I'm happy to just go for Follow Me and Drain Punch into Chiyu. If we knock out Chiyu, we should just win 1v1 against Cresselia. Okay, Chiyu protects, which is fine. Like... Unless you actually had Psychic slash Moonblast this entire time on Cresselia and it's not Trick Room. I've been playing this game assuming that that's not the case, but that'd be kind of wild. But if it's just Icy Win here, then it's fine. Or Lunar Blessing, that's also fine. Yeah. This is an interesting game because, like, we can kind of deduce what my opponent has based off what moves we've seen, right? And, like, even though we don't know what our opponent's final move is, we can be fairly confident let it's trick room given their team composition and all the other moves that they had revealed so you know like you can go for heat wave here but like i'm mainly just worried about getting flinched by dark pulse so that's all i'm trying to play around right now because like cresselia is never going to win the 1v1 against the annihilate okay they go for helping hand which is fine that's going to do a lot of damage but all i need is just like 30 hp with annihilate to win this game and with the friend guard from mousehold we should be good yeah, that doesn't even do half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I think this game was really interesting where it's like we use kind of context clues to deduce that our opponent's Cresselia doesn't have a Psychic or Moonblast, for example. And as a result, Annihilate actually is a lot stronger in this endgame than it normally would be. So. To me, what was really valuable in this game was using Zorark to bait out that Fairy Terra from Flutter. The, the Terra makes a lot of sense, right? My opponent's like, okay, I just want to deal as much damage to Annihilate as possible. It's always fine to protect here. I mean, they have Icy Wind. Yeah, they're never going to win. So I guess we could have just Rage Fist. But in case they actually do a surprise Psychic or Moonblast, like, I at least want to just like go for Protect and get that free Leftovers recovery. There's not that much they can do against that. And then just Rage Fist. But I think even if they did have Psychic or Moonblast, I'm not even sure a crit onto a Nightly would get the knockout unless you're like Max Special Attack, for example. But the point I wanted to make was the Fairy Terra and Flutter ended up not being very helpful for my opponent because it's like we were Focus Sash on Zorark anyway, but of course they weren't going to know that. And I think their logic makes a lot of sense because the Nightly is actually really scary for their team to deal with. I think leading the Flutter makes sense where you try to just snipe off Mouse Hold, for example, on turn one with like Helping Hand, Fairy Terra, Moonblast. Or if I led Mouse Ape, um, yeah, like you, you just deny the Rage Fist stacks and that's a really big deal. And with the Annihilate being bluffed, I think my opponent was like, well, I'm really scared about Annihilate just clicking bulk up a couple times. So let me just try to eliminate it immediately. I think what was interesting in that game was my opponent not leaning into Trick Room at all and ha going with the faster mode of Cresselia plus Flutter, Urshifu and Shiyu. And I think that was actually pretty scary for us to go up against. But Zorark doing really interesting things once again, just baiting out a Terra immediately. And I think that prevented my opponent from having a defensive Terra, which was really valuable in this end game. Okay, Cresselia, Dragonite, Urshifu, Hands, Ursaluna, Flutter. The six got top four at the 2023 World Championships. So how do we feel? Hmm, pretty worried about Cresselia, Ursaluna. Like, if you want to set up Trick Room, you can go Flutter, Crest, Hands, Crest, Ursaluna, Crest, even. I could just go with Mousehold Annihilate. And if you're my opponent, you should try to lead in a way to beat Mousehold Annihilate, so I think Flutter comes out. It could be Flutter or Urshifu, honestly. Hmm. Flutter or Urshifu. 
I think I want to lead Heatran to deal with Flutter personally. Heatran, Zoroark, Landorus Annihilate in this one. Do I really not bring Mouse? It feels kind of awkward into like Iron Hands or Saluna or Urshifu. And Landers into the physical attackers feels fairly good. Although it's probably inner focus Dragonite. So let's see. Main idea here is try to snipe off Flutter main early, then bring out Annihilate afterwards. I'm also worried about like bulk up or Swords Dancer Saluna. Wow, it is just Cresser Saluna. Huh. Could have just gone Mouse Ape then. Dang. I led in a way to try to counter them leading Flutter, but they didn't lead it, which should put me into a really awkward spot, quite frankly. Um, I think Heatran pivoting out into Landers to get that initial Intimidate is fine, and then I'm thinking of just going for Shadow Ball here on a Cresselia. The problem is, how do I weather the storm after this turn, right? Like, Mouse Ape would have just absolutely wrecked this, so I really... The thing about using a combo like Mouse Ape is I normally expect my opponents to lead in a way to counter it. Right? Because Mouse Ape is a lead that commands so much respect. And... Honestly, if they're leading this, part of me wonders if they have ally switch on Cresselia. Because I think that could make sense as a counter. The idea is you would lull me into a false sense of security, thinking, oh, I can just beat up into Rage Fist on Cresselia. And then you just ally switch turn one immediately and go for, like, Earthquake, right? Although Earthquake wouldn't really do that much, quite frankly. Okay. They're going to commit their Terra immediately. So, okay. Terra on Cresselia. Fairy? Dark! Huh. Makes sense. Gives you resistance to Ghost. <laughs> so, unfortunately, my poor Annihilate going for Shadow Ball is going to do no damage. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that was their counter into Mouse Ape. It's the Dark Terra. I don't think Dark Terra is that common on Cresselia. I've seen like Fairy more frequently, for example. But um, that answers my question. I actually think I can't really win this game after that turn. Um, that was, yeah, just the perfect duo. So that makes a lot of sense. And that's one of the downsides with what we have here. We don't have a way to like really burst damage. And with them having a normal Pokemon on the field as well as Dark... Like, even if I went for beat up or bulk up, for example, they de generally win the trade on turn one. So, I'll try my best to try to figure out a way to come back right now, but it, it's looking incredibly difficult. That's as big of a counter as we could run into. Like, Zapdos doesn't provide anything as a lead. Landers doesn't even have U-turn here. And we just don't have immediate burst damage, which makes this so much harder for us. Okay, I'll switch Landers into Heatran. And just protect. But I think with Swords Dance on the Earth Luna, it's like they could get greedy and go for a second Swords Dance, and that would put me in really bad shape. I wouldn't be surprised if they just also straight up Earthquake here. It's a fairly obvious switch. It's like, the problem is none of my Pokemon even really threaten with that much damage right now. And yeah, they went for Earthquake. Well done. This is, yeah, like, we ran into probably the two worst sets on the Cresselia plus Earth Luna. Like, they had Dark Terra and they had um, the... Swords Dance on Ursaluna. Both of those make this matchup substantially trickier. I led in a way thinking they're going to try to counter the Mouse Ape lead, but yeah. This is really nicely done, by the way, because like I could have attacked with the Zorark here and protected with Landorus instead. But if I wanted any chance to win this game, I would have had to like call every turn under Trick Room perfectly, and that's really difficult. The reality is that Zorark just didn't really provide us too much value as a lead here because my opponent's team is just so bulky, and none of these moves really helped me out that much. And yeah, they ended up having... The perfect combination of sets here. So, I guess I can bring out Annihilate here at least, and then now pivot my Zoroark into Landorus. But, like, they can just facade that slot. Like, I think if there's any chance we win this, I need to bulk up, though. Uh, if, I got, if I actually got last turn correctly, maybe I wouldn't be in terrible shape. You can just EQ Ice Beam Zoroark, but... Yeah, I think I'll just switch in Landers. I mean, the, I wouldn't be shocked if they just facade into it, expecting it. But if I get this bulk up off and I get the Intimidate onto the Ursaluna, I think there's a world in which my Annihilate could actually pull off a comeback in this matchup. So I'm not going to give up yet. 
But that last turn, like, my opponent just nailed the first turn of Trick Room immediately, and that's exactly what you want when you're using Cresselia or Saluna. Okay, they do just go for EQ. I'll take that. Uh, that was a lot more damage onto an Eyelip than I expected, honestly. But at least this turn worked out okay. They have Helping Hand on Cresselia, though. It's like, I'm still in a lot of danger, I think. Basically, what I'm thinking right now is I protect Annihilate, pivot Landorus out. Oh, they could just Swords Dance again right now, too. Two turns of Trick Room. So yeah, like, I'd like to protect here and pivot Landorus out into Zoroark, but it's a fairly obvious prediction. Part of me is thinking about just attacking with an Eye here. I don't know. My opponent's played so well so far. Would they really go for another Swords Dance right now? It's just so incredibly greedy. Okay, if they, if they do it, kudos to them. I'm making the more obvious play here, and if my opponent... Decides to go for a second Swords Dance, then they just... I mean, they deserve to win this game right from the start. I think they played better than me every turn. So, let's see. Okay, good. It's just Earthquake. Well, that makes me feel like I still have a chance then. But this goes to show how even a single Terra can drastically change a matchup, right? Dark Terra is the perfect Terra to have against the Rage Fist here. Yeah, so they just go for Ice Beam. That's fine. This is the setup that I was looking for. I have the bulk ups, and I can just, like, Drain Punch with my Annihilate. Like, the problem is I've lost so many resources to get to this point, right? So it's just not looking very good for us. But. I wonder if they ever actually just Facade with their Ursa Luna. That's such a crazy play to make, though, right? But do I really need a Terra Annihilate? Like, the logic to Terra here is in case... Cresselia goes for a Psychic or a Moonblast onto that slot. Last turn of Trick Room. Just looking so hard to win. Like, I've lost so many resources. Terra. Drain Punch into Cress. Protect. Oh. <sighs> So how would I play this in a best of three? I think it's really hard. Because I don't have a way to deny Trick Room from Cresselia. And I think Ursa Luna would Swords Dance. I also just don't have a way to like really threaten it with damage immediately. I think it's just honestly not a very optimal matchup. But you should always still try to think about ways that you can win. Okay, so they go for EQ. Yep. I'm thinking, like, between Drain Punch Sustain and Leftovers, maybe we can get to a point where we heal back enough. They do Ice Beam. Okay, nice. So they survived the turn, at least. It's great damage from Drain Punch. Okay. Also, we have Rock Slide, so with Rock Slide, there's always a way with Annihilate. But I think my question here is, do you just protect Trick Room? It's actually kind of awkward for them to set up Trick Room again. I'm not sure you want that, necessarily. I'm actually happy to just Drain Punch Ursa Luna here. And Rock Slide. Maybe they just switch Ursa Luna out here. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's... I was... I talked about Ally Switch in the beginning of this battle as well. Ah. Uh. Wow, if I'd actually Rock Slide and just Drain Punch the Crest Slot again, expecting, like, Protect Trick Room, that also would have worked out. But I guess we have a flinch chance here from Rock Slide. Man, I actually wonder if we could have pulled off the comeback there if I Drain Punch Cresselia then. But let's see if we flinch. Nope, no flinch. Okay. That should be game over then. Oh, ran into all the tricks here. Dark Terra, Facade, or sorry, Ally Switch, and Swords Dancer, Saluna. 
I just don't see an easy way to beat all of that. Like, there's no clear turn one play to make and no clear lead matchup, in my opinion, especially without U-turn on the Landorus. U-turn would help substantially, I think. Being able to deal significant damage to Cresselia while also pivoting in and out for Intimidate is very nice. Man, given Dragonite, I mean, I assume... Like, if their last one was Urshifu, I actually think Annihilate could have won this game for us. I'm still not going to give up, though. I'm going to just Drain Punch. Wait, I actually think this might switch into Flutter. Okay, wait, I think I can still win this. If their last one is Flutter, I'm going to make a read. I, I think I'm so far behind right now, so I'm like, it makes sense for you to want to switch out Ursa Luna because you're at minus two attack and you think, oh, you're just going to Drain Punch the slot. But if I somehow nail Flutter on the switch and I think Annihilate actually can 1v2 Dragonite and Ursa Luna. Ah, but they just stay in. Cool. Makes sense. I don't, I don't regret going for that, though, because I'm so far behind, and I actually think if they did switch in Flutter there, I'd actually very likely win the game just off that. I'm actually curious, though. If I had just Dream Punched and their last one was Flutter main, I may have still been able to win. But I thought the switch there just felt very likely, given that it generally feels safe. So I feel really behind in this game. I don't mind p positioning for it, but I think what that endgame shows me is Annihilate is actually really darn good. Because if you think about their remaining options, it's Flutter... I think what's likely is that they have just um, Specs Flutter in the back, right? So my opponent's thinking, okay, no need to throw away the win con. I'll just go for uh, save it and then just bring it out and then click Moonblast. The main thing is that Dragonite was doing such little damage to us. So, like, it essentially... I was thinking, well, if I Drain Punch into the um, Ursa Luna heal all the way back to full HP... If your last one's Urshifu, I actually think I just win off Rage Fist. If you bring out that Flutter main and I can survive the Choice Specs Moonblast and, like, Dragonite continues to do such minimal damage, then I just Rage Fist to KO the Flutter main, and then it's 1v1 against Dragonite, and I just Rage Fist to KO the Dragonite. So... I don't know if I actually needed to fish for the Flutter main switch in there, but I don't regret going for it because it was a 1v3 at that point anyway, and I felt like I needed to make a big play, but I guess because Dragonite actually... Like, I was expecting something like Outrage, right? But Terra Blast was such a weak option there, the Dragonite wasn't actually really dealing... doing anything. Um, I wonder how it would have played out if I had either Drain Punched the Cresselia the turn the ally switch came out, or if I had Drain Punched Ursa Luna in that endgame. Because I think, yeah, Annihilate was actually really good, but it's just like we lost so many resources in the early game. Whoa, okay. I think this is the team that Patrick Donegan used to get day two at the World Championships in this year. He was on stream with it, and he won, and I actually got to interview him, which was really cool. I don't remember if Heatran was on that team, but I definitely remember Obama Snow, Articuno, Ting Lu, Fergraf, and Iron Hands. So, definitely one of the most unique teams to come out from Worlds this year. Fergraf is a pretty big problem for Annihilate in particular. Uh, I will say Zorak is interesting just for Hyper Voice. I think Heatran is going to be really important for me here. Annihilate is still really good, but I have to eliminate the Furgraph first. Right? I think Zapdos doesn't make that much sense in this matchup. It's probably just the top four mons, which is kind of the default mode I go with when playing with this team. I think Hands Furograph as a lead on their end, though, is just really strong. So, I'm thinking of leading Zorark plus Annihilate, Heatran plus Mouse. Here's my goal. I think it's eliminate Furograph first, then use Annihilate to the best of my ability. And I think with the Zorark plus the... Annihilate lead, I'm immune to fake out, which is really nice. So my, my opponent might be baited into clicking fake out onto mouse hold. So bomb is still in hands, okay. Yeah, so I'm definitely happy clicking bulk up on Annihilate to start here. I'm honestly down to just hyper voice bulk up turn one, I think. Yeah. I'm hoping they get baited into thinking we're mouse and they just click fake out onto that to deny me beat up Rage Fist. Volko puts me in a pretty good spot. Uh, with Water Terra here on Obama Snow, that's going to be really good. The main thing is in this matchup, I have to play against Sheer Cold Articuno with Bright Powder. At least that's what was on the original version of this team. And that's really scary. So I'm hoping it's fake out into Zorark. 
we start chipping away at Hyper Voice. Ah, they didn't fake out though. Wow, okay. It might be Drain Punch though. Onto the mouse, which I'd also be okay with. They Leaf Stormed into the mouse. And Wild Charge into Annihilate. Okay, definitely not how I expect the turn one to play out. It's really interesting. They. Yeah, gave me the opportunity to potentially just go for the beat up stuff, but this is an okay turn. I'm happy with that. Uh, we can just hyper voice again, honestly. And I'm happy to just dream punch into a bomb of snow, I think. Yeah. We got lucky with the leaf storm miss for sure, but we have focus ash on the Zora arc, so would have survived at one HP. Dream Punch is pretty good here. I mean, maybe a Bomb of Snow protects. I'm not even sure if it has protect if you have Leaf Storm. Well, you can run Blizzard, Leaf Storm, or Roar Veil protect. You know. Okay, a Bomb of Snow switches, which makes sense, but what are you bringing out? Yeah, Articuno, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's a Dream Punch and a Hyper Voice in that slot. It's mainly a question of whether or not I miss here. We are going to miss with Hyper Voice, okay? Oi. They wild charge into Zorark. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I think the main fear right now is just missing every attack. Like, even if we had just hit that one drain punch this turn, it would have been huge because I would have healed back so much. But that is just how this is going to look when we play against a team like this. We just kind of have to accept that. I hear I'm going to go for Icy Wind. And Rage Fist onto Iron Hands. Icy Wind to drop Articuno's speed. Like, I think Annihilate is still incredibly well positioned, and they, they did not even bring the Furograph in so far. So even despite the miss, like, it's still fine. But to my opponent's credit, yeah, like, they didn't get baited into clicking Fake Out on Mouse on turn one. Although, like, honestly, that was a little bit surprising, because I feel like if I did just have Mouse and I went for Beat Up Rage Fist, I feel like we just win the game off that on turn one. So I thought my opponent kind of had to counter that option. But now I'm just going to try to target around Articuno. The main thing is if they go for Sheer Cold right now onto the Zor or, or sorry, onto the um, Annihilate and just hit immediately, I could just lose off that. But they go for Blizzard, okay. No freeze. Cool. One thing to think about is if I Terra Annihilate, I do actually become weak to... Um, I think I want to bring out Mouse first, because Heatran's going to be so good into Obama Snow plus Articuno in the endgame. But I could see them bringing, like, Ting Lu out right now. We get Mouse. Yep, there it is. Okay. I think personally I'm happy to click Super Fang onto Ting Lu and Drain Punch into it. It's just the Drain Punch is pretty obvious, but if they Terra Ting Lu, then you take so much damage and Heatran's looking really good. Maybe I should just Rage Fist instead, or even Protect. I think alternatively I can just double Protect this turn and scout out for what they want to do, right? I actually think that's the best option. Get more Leftovers Recovery and see who Terra is here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. That's the thing with Zorark, right? Like, you're not always going to get the ideal turn one, but it's fine. The ideal turn one would have been them, like, using Fake Out, right? I definitely had good RNG throughout this episode. But I think with them committing to this option, now this next turn I can just go beat up Terra Rage Fist. Yeah, we... Terra the Annihilate, we don't really need a Terra Heatran. Grass Terra doesn't really help out there. It's probably just Blizzard and EQ. Yeah. Okay, works for me. The Ting Lu is reducing Articuno's damage output right now as well, so it's not too scary. And given my... I would think the beat up plus Rage Fist combo should just KO Ting Lu. So, yeah, like this last turn I could have gone Super Fang, Drain Puncher, Super Fang, Rage Fist, but it's like, why not just see if they're going to protect here, right? So, we have the attack and defense boost here, so let's just go for beat up. Onto you, let's Terra here, and then let's just Rage Fist onto Ting Lu. We should be incredibly well positioned right now. 
I actually think if my opponent had been fishing for sheer colds with Articuno, I mean, they only really had one uh, opportunity to go for that. And I think when playing against a team like this, the goal should be to limit the amount of opportunities they get to click sheer cold. We did double miss on the Articuno, which made things a little more challenging, but I think if we just get the knockout on Ting Lu here, we should be okay. And we should survive Blizzard plus Earthquake, given the defense boost, as well as the friend guard from the mouse hold. And if I knock out Ting Lu, then Heatran has a very good matchup in the end game with the double ice types. Yep, and that's a knockout. Beautiful. I actually thought... I'm surprised to did not see Furigraph, because I thought that was my opponent's best option in this matchup. So for that to not make an appearance makes things easier, but they could still freeze here with Blizzard, so let's see. Nice, no freeze. Kudos to them, though, because they did time snow perfectly. It stops right now, so you bring in a bomb of snow and it resets, but I don't think you can beat Annihilate from this angle. I think Annihilate actually had an excellent matchup into everything they brought. One thing to note here is Abomasnow, of course, does carry the Leaf Storm. But I think here I'm happy to just go for Follow Me and Rage Fist. Yeah. Okay. Good Protect on Abomasnow's end. So they're fishing for freezes right now. Um, I could have also gone Super Fang Rage Fist into Articuno, but like the yeah Articuno just having bright powder concerns me as we saw we missed both previously and they go for freeze dry that's fine cool I will say the potential of the freezes is definitely a little bit stressful but I'll just go for another follow me I wonder if drain punch gets the KO but I just want Articuno fainted right now. I do not want it to get a potential Blizzard off. And I'm targeting around Articuno just because I know I can miss Articuno and I don't want to like double up into it, double miss like I did in the beginning of the game and then just like give my opponent the opportunity to Blizzard or Leaf Storm. So Miles goes for follow me. Okay. We get our stacked up Rage Fist into Bomb of Snow, and the defense boost from the snow does not help because we had that chip damage. That's why I actually really like Zorark in this game, and like, it could have looked even better, right, if my opponent had gone for like Fake Out Turn 1, for example. They did go for a nice move of just dealing damage, but the thing is Annihilate got stacked up so quickly in this game, and now I've got Heatran in the back, which is kind of the perfect option as well. So to me, I felt like Annihilate was going to be a really good win condition in this matchup, but I needed to eliminate the... Ferrigraph? That's how I thought this game would play out, but they didn't even bring Ferrigraph in the end, so yeah. Three turns of snow left. I'm happy to just heat wave here. And protect. Yeah, we have that drop on the Articuno. Articuno could theoretically still win this, though, given that it has freeze dry. But heat wave single target connects here. Nice. Cool. Oh, I should have... I guess I just attacked with Annihilate there. <laughs> do we miss? And do they KO if I miss is the other question. I think we might even survive, but... Should have just tried attacking with Annihilate last turn. Because the Sheer Cold on Heatran was their only win con. And I might as well give myself an extra chance to move. Alright. Rage Fist doesn't miss, though. Jeez. <laughs> That's what this Articuno does, though, right? It basically... It can tilt... Opponents so hard. From a single miss. And, like, we started with the double miss immediately, right? And, like, I had a plus one Drain Punch going into that slot as well as Hyper Voice. And I think that alone... That combo alone would have done, like, 75% if we had connected there. So... Double miss was definitely stressful, but in the end, Heat Wave connects, and even though Sheer Cold hit, we were able to connect with Rage Fist, but... Yeah, I was wondering, like, if Rage Fist just doesn't connect there, does Freeze Dry just knock us out because I committed to the Terra? I'm not sure, but man, that was, that was quite the game. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one, so thank you so much as always for joining me. I feel like we played against some pretty interesting and diverse teams throughout the course of this episode, and... I'm just happy to try out Zoroark. I think I learned a lot from using it, and as you can see... 
It's not the easiest Pokemon to use, but even one really strong turn one with this Pokemon when used properly can really blow the game wide open for you, especially when paired with Mousehold and Annihilate in particular. So thanks for joining me. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.